So we are starting with the first P of marketing mix that is product. When we discussed four P's, I have already explained to you three things. One, what is product? What is product mix? And what are the product related decision? So anything of value to the people which is sold in the market, available in the market is called product. Product is bundle of utilities. Why? Because it talks about both tangible and intangible attributes. It also has functional, psychological and social benefit. Product combination means when we use different products or one single product line or variety of products we manufacture and we give it to the people or we offer it to the people in the market. So that is what we have already discussed. Today I am going to tell you about the product related decisions in detail. The first one is branding. The three decisions are branding, packaging and labeling and first we are discussing about branding. Branding is what? It's the process of giving name or a sign or a symbol etc to a product. This also we have done when we did the functions of marketing. Now there are some terms related to branding. The first is brand, the next one is brand name, next one is brand mark and the last one is trademark. Now what's a brand? Brand is a name, term, sign, symbol or some combination of them used to identify a particular product. Like for example if we talk about Nike. So this is the brand we are talking about that manufactures sports, clothing, shoes, etc. Brand name. What is utterable, speakable, spoken? Nike is spoken. Now, the, pa <clears throat> the part of the brand which can be spoken that is verbal component of a brand is known as brand name. Next comes brand mark. Nike has a brand mark which is called Sush. If you have seen it, it is something like this and it is called Sush, right? This is right kehte hain. it is not the right or tick mark it is called sush the part of the brand name which can be recognized but is not utterable we don't speak it but we can recognize so if there's a tick mark there it's a sush and it's nike brand right it appears in form of symbol sign or some kind of design next trademark what's a trademark whenever your brand brand name trademark oh, sorry brand mark it gets registered it gets protected legally. Nobody else can copy it. Nobody else can use it. It is known as trademark. So a brand or part of the brand that is given legal protection is known as trademark. People usually take a trademark. They register their brand name so that other people don't copy it and they can get the benefit of the same brand name for a very long time. Like for example, Nike, Samsung and many other brands are all trademarks also and they are registered. Now, let's come to the next topic, characteristics of a good brand name. What are the characteristics of good brand name? First, it should be short, easy to pronounce, spell, recognize, remember. Ponds, creme, rin, detergent powder as well as soap cake, washing for, uh, for washing clothes. A brand should suggest the product's benefit and qualities. Like for example, it is... Hajmola. Now we know Hajmola candies are for digestive properties. A brand name should be distinctive. Hat ke hona chahiye. So when your brand name has a, a particular kind of distinctive feature, it's always attractive. Like for example, if you've heard of Aldo, you've heard of Louis Vuitton, distinctive. Brand name should be adaptable so that whenever you launch a new product, you're able to adjust right so adaptable it should be versatile versatile means again when uh, you should be able to adapt with any kind of like you're launching a tv so samsung tvs are also there samsung phones are also there but then it should be versatile it can be used for all the various product adaptable in any kind of scenario and versatile means can be used with any kind of product it should be capable of being registered and protected legally yeah no other name with the same no other brand name should be there uh, moreover if you remember we did formation of company in um, 11th standard and where name approval was very necessary three names are given to the registrar of companies to register the name of the company and it should be not be un, uh, undesirable as well as uh, it should not be we should not copy uh, somebody else's name otherwise that name approval is not given so same way 
even your brand it should be such that you can register it and it can be protected legally nobody else has the same name chosen name should have staying power it should not get outdoor outdated if you ha have i don't know whether you people know about it or not but uh, we have sibaka toothpaste you know that used to come as binaka now uh, then there was there is another uh, you know there's a, a kind of a creme viko vajradanti tooth powder toothpaste and as well as they make viko vajradanti make uh, some kind of uh, you know face cream also so the name is such you know i started stumbling while speaking about it print brand name should not be like that it should be very smooth very nice all right so we're talking about advantages of branding there are advantages to marketer as well as advantages to customer starting with the first one what does brand do first thing enables marking product differentiation so when you go and buy a brown color chocolate with a purple color uh, line there and when you go and buy a purple color chocolate with golden uh, color uh, line there what are the two chocolates what is one chocolate the one is dairy milk the other one is bonville so you have two different products available product differentiation if you buy purple and yellow it's a munch but if you buy total golden it's a five star if you buy a red color chocolate uh, that the wrapper is of red color what is it it is nothing else but kit kat usually it is kit kat so same thing enables marking product differentiation one product from another product can be differentiated once you are well aware of the brand name or you know the brand well now it helps in advertising and display programs of course yes the companies you know they actually help in advertising the particular brand uh, they make a color combination scheme they give shelf space and uh, they encourage the uh, shopkeepers or the retailers uh, to advertise the product and people come to know about the brand and then they see the brand and then they buy that particular product and the brand gets uh, easily uh, popular or it gets promoted next differential pricing now package uh, when you talk about branding you know the differential pricing of course louis vuitton costs more than the aldo bag you know about it when we talk about the nike products they are little expensive in comparison to any local sport uh, goods which are available it can be anything so that product differentiation is always there pricing differentiation is always there because of the kind of brand which you are using so brand name makes a difference Easy introduction of a new product. You've launched a new product. Congratulations! Then what do you do? You give it a brand name. If you are an established brand name, things will go on like this. People will buy it immediately. But if you are not an established brand name, people think twice, and you have to give incentives and offers, buy one get one free types of offers, to actually make people buy that particular product. So brand name makes a difference. Pankaj Priya is also a brand name. Ah, huh? it makes a difference. Advantages to customers. helps in product identification like i just told you product differentiation you can differentiate one product from another it's easier to know you know about lal kila basmati and you know about normal basmati you know about uh, uh, like i gave you example of chocolate wrappers so you can easily for customers it's easier to identify for marketer it's easier to sell so helps in product identification ensures quality usually branded products are considered better than non branded products there used to be a time when we were all in for non branded products in reality if you go and talk to your parents and if you tell them that we want to buy ed hardy t-shirt you know you go with your dad or your mom and they will take you to the shop or you take them to the shop and they will touch the product and say eh quality is not very good it is very thin how much is it for 8000 not worth it at all for them quality matters most brand doesn't for you ed hardy matters most so but otherwise in general for every customer quality matters the most brand comes uh, according to that so high ended brands are expensive of course added cost but then for customers they it ensures quality okay this is the brand this is going to be expensive and we are mentally prepared to buy that particular kind of brand i am a total uh, fan of michael kors watches and to be very honest it ensures quality and we know it status symbol again michael kors is also a status symbol and i want to actually own a tso watch that's my dream watch which i want to have so that is a status symbol for me that's how brand makes a difference so what will if i wear a simple watch a simple very simple titan watch if i wear a very simple um, smart watch which is very good for me 
is as simple a good one a watch but no i want to buy a tissot why because that's a status symbol when i go to a party i'm wearing a tissot watch it will always make a difference so that's what brand does and i think you people know brand better than i do that's about branding next we are going to discuss is what packaging next we are going to talk about is packaging as you know packaging is what it's a container or a wrapper given to a product to differentiate it from another product also for easy handling so uh, usually when we talk about packaging it uh, acts as a silent salesman why it provides protection to the product it promotes the product as well as it helps in assessing the quality of the product this is one of the uh, question which is usually asked why is packaging called silent salesman apart from that we need to know what exactly packaging uh, has as importance and functions and there is another topic called levels of packaging so first i'll discuss is the meaning of packaging it means the act of designing and producing the container or wrapper of a product and putting the product in it so container and wrapper is the keyword levels of packaging include primary secondary transportation as you can see this colgate toothpaste the tube which is there in this tube the paste is filled this is your primary package when you have a dabba a box in which it comes and you throw it away throw this dabba away when you want to use this a particular tube it is known as secondary packaging and when the seller wants to sell it to the retailer he sells it in a in the big corrugated boxes that is known as transportation packaging so explanation come this just the diagrams are self explanatory primary it refers to the products immediate container it is kept till the consumer is ready to use and of course once this finishes off people throw it away in india we have a different uh, way of using toothpaste so when we were kids our, our parents used to you know cut the paste paste and use it till the time they could find whatever paste was there in the tube or the container so don't use it like that anyhow secondary it refers to the additional layers of protection that are kept till the product is ready for use yeah we throw away this dabba and it is disposed of while the product is kept for use this is kept for use and this dabba is thrown away there was a time when we used to get refund on this we used to we used to return this dabba of colgate and 5 rupees used to be given by the retailer to us so i have done that thing also next transportation it refers to the further packing components uh, necessary for uh, storage identification or transportation this is usually done by retailer we are nowhere involved but this kind of packaging is also available so these are the levels of packaging next we come on to is importance of packaging now first is rising standard of health and sanitation see uh, there was a time when people used to go and buy their groceries uh, like for example they used to buy their pulses uh, uh, wheat flour rice etc and the retailers or the pansaris the shopkeepers used to uh, the grocery store uh, keepers used to keep it in big uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call them um uh, big sacks you know uh, the, they used to keep it in that and they used to give a uh, a 1 kg in small packs maybe paper bags or sometime polythenes they used to give it like that now if you go to a departmental store all you have to do is move to the corner where grocery is kept pick up simply pulses the kind of pulses you want they are nicely beautifully packed so healthy and you feel that they are hygienic also and lesser of adulteration lesser of mixing so that's what rising standard of health and sanitation like for example now you get packaged atta or packed atta which is a one of the uh, very uh, good and hygienic way of availing wheat flour self service outlet now uh, when you talk about packaging they are re- uh, packaging is really important in a self service outlet same departmental store you walk in the department also whatever you want things are kept nicely packed you don't have to go uh, to the shopkeeper ask him to wait for you it's already kept in different types of packaging different containers different quantities whatever you want you just pick it up put it in your cart and just go to the billing counter and get things built is as simple as that sometimes you know you don't even have to uh, sometimes people are also not there the there is no manager at the billing counter you just have to show the barcode and total comes and you just have to swap in your uh, card pay through that and just walk off from the self service store so that is also there innovational opportunity i have given you examples out here example uh, milk tetra pack milk used to come in bottles you know 
and uh, what people used to do was when they in the morning they used to open their door and pick up the uh, milk bottle half asleep usually the milk bottle used to break so a change was thought of and the change that was that that the milk packs started coming in tetra bags as well as those um, um, verka and uh, amul uh, plastic bags which uh, they are available and the other tetra packs the it can be stored for 4 to 5 days in the tetra pack or more than that days also if uh, you know uh, you keep uh, if you refrigerate it if you can't consume it immediately and the quantity is large so that became another innovational opportunity and so many things have come in this manner you are juices are available like that and a uh, lot other things your detergent powders are come in a very nice packet then uh, we have uh, uh, you know your uh, uh, sh- uh, sometimes your uh, biscuits come in a packaging which usually people don't dispose of that packet and they keep it that is innovational so all these things started happening product differentiation now when you differentiate from uh, chocolates you talk about the chocolates ferro rocher and uh, and then you talk about the dairy uh, dairy uh, cadbury dairy milk silk or bubbly or whatever you like to eat you can always differentiate one product from another next comes functions of packaging first product identification it's easier to identify colgate toothpaste from pond scrim or colgate to sensodyne kf or sensodent any kind of toothpaste or maybe binaka sibaka pepsodent whatever you are able to identify because colgate is dominant red dominating and pepsodent and all are comparatively uh, pepsodent is white and then you have uh, white and little blue and then you have sensodyne which is totally blue and silver so different color combinations and you can easily identify them i usually identify my toothpaste which i use as in kf like i usually uh, identify with the packaging product protection like for example lays packet we have now when you talk about the lays packet uh, they are usually uh, filled with nitrogen so that uh, the potato wafers don't get oxidized you know um, because if they are not properly packed the vacuum pack is not there what happens is the t- taste becomes uh, you know it's it doesn't taste good and there's a lot of smell in it um, that smell of oil is there so in order to see that sometimes happens in the local packed uh, wafers which we eat the lo- local packed potato wafers we eat usually with lays packet it doesn't happen why because they have product uh, the product is protected through packaging and apart from that also product is protected from uh, by packaging again against bad weather and rodents and many other things spoilage pilferage so many things are there next we talk about is facilitating use of product for example eye drop and when you buy those eye drop bottle and how do you open it up so on the cap there is a small spike what you do is you turn that cap and with uh, with just pressure put a little pressure and the eye drop bottle get open even with the ointments which you use better with see or any other ointment which you use there is a small spike kind of a thing on the cap of the particular ointment or the bottle so see this is totally use of product how easily the product can be used now you have your tin food initially people used to open the uh, tin food with the tin opener now they have just uh, very easy to open the uh, cans you know you just have to pull off the cover and uh, the uh, products can be easily used so this is packaging only easy to use easy to handle even when you buy your uh, a uh, tomato ketchup you know it comes in a now it comes in a plastic packing where you just have to open up the uh, there's a there's a cap there and you open up and use the product and then just uh, put the cap back and so it is no more uh, that uh, bottle uh, which can break or sometimes you know it is not made up of glass is the right what i wanted to say so that is all uh, facilitating the use of product so product can be kept for a longer time and used for a longer time product promotion oh kinder joy uh favorite of all the kids why because there's a toy in it now that toy is a totally useless toy but still people love it that's a way to promote product even uh, sometime back your uh, kurkure and uh, some other kind of these eatables used to have small toys in it and children used to love buy, buy, buying it and sometimes you know what how do they promote uh, you buy five uh, packets uh, of a particular kind of uh, eatable and you get one beyblade free and there was a time when we had house full of beyblade because my son used to uh, buy that particular kind of uh, uh, you know wafers not to eat but to collect the beyblade and i as a kid had collected gold spot crowns gold spot gold ring crowns why because in every crown there was a character of jungle book 
and when we collected the complete char uh, those correct characters uh, our jungle book was given free as a gift from gold spot can you believe that gold spot is again a product uh, produced by walt disney this is same as parlay division it was a parlay division where your coca cola and nimka comes from so gold gold spot was an orange drink and i collected all those at that time so packaging actually helps in promotion of the product next we are going to talk about is labeling all right next we start with with labeling what is the label a label is or labeling is to put a label on a product what does label do it provides information provides information about the uh, product about the product the content of the product manufacture date of manufacturing mrp expiry date and lot many other things so why do we put a label it is important to put a label so that people when they go and buy they can read about the product know about the product it has become one of the mandatory requirement by the law that you have to put a label on the product sometimes when local products are manufactured they may give you a label where a small sticker white color sticker uh, sticker might be put there and you have just price of the product written there that's not a clear label but still it mentions the price so a simple tag form of a label sometimes there is a complex graphic sometimes a boat and patwar is made or somewhere a uh, on a detergent a box of detergent uh, powder a lady with a pen wants you to write your queries or any kind of uh, problems you are facing with that particular detergent or any views you want to uh, project you can do that so all these kind of things where the complete information is provided on the uh, pack of the product is on the label let's read about label label refers to designing the label to be put on the package it may be simple tag form or complex graphic simple tag form is something like this you have a simple tag and 10 rupees is written over there i'll just darken it up okay you have a simple tag white color and 10 rupees is written so it's simple tag form and complex graphic is where you have full fledged label and you know there's uh, the, the barcode is there you have a barcode and all complete information is there so all these things uh, constitute of the complex graphic functions of labeling describe the product and specify its contents i have done this for you out here i'll explain it to you properly first major function of label is to describe the product how say suppose this is a label for uh, apple juice i'll write it out here it is a label for apple juice this question came in board once and it was for five marks and the question was draw a label now you don't have this year you do not have five marks question but you may get it in six marks or four marks invariably so label for apple juice the first point describe the product and specify its contents everything name of the product apple juice name of manufacturer ready red address of manufacturer 32 lajpatpur ludhiana net weight when packed 200 ml manufacturing date 2nd january 2021 expiry date 15 july 2021 MRP 18 rupees batch number P3212 direction for use to be consumed within 2 days of opening contents juice concentrate sugar preservative nutritional facts or nutrition facts a serving uh, for one bottle you have amount per serving calories is 140 total fat carbs sodium etc everything is mentioned there this is our bottle of ready red and the label is this is the label which at the back of this has the particular these particular information so complete product is described for you like for example it talks about the contents nutritional values everything date of manufacture everything when you describe a label identification of product or brand of course i am a die hard fan of 70% dark bonville and you will not believe it the moment i walk into a bon, uh, walk, walk into a departmental store and i see uh, that column that shelf where bonville is kept i tend to buy that particular chocolate that's just at inclination to buy that chocolate there was a time where when i was literally crazy for a dairy milk chocolate and whenever there used to be a ad on the television you know i used to get hunger pang of eating only chocolate imagine so identification of product or brand the moment purple color chocolate used to come identification was there dairy milk and now whenever i go see on a shelf a brown color chocolate wrapper it is again what nothing else but the identification of the product so it's easier to identify the product grading of product sometimes uh, not sometimes most of the time label specify the kind of product you are buying so like for example tea yellow label tea 
okay green label tea and red label tea brook bond manufactures that and the tea uh, full tea leaves are there in yellow label tea uh, yellow label tea green a little shaft and in red those granules are there and you have tea bags also and as per the quality the teas are described so when you talk about the normal tea which we have that granules you will not believe that is the the lowest quality tea if you do not believe that is processed that's not a full leaf and that is uh, not very healthy for us and i don't drink that tea so that's why i'm just guiding grading of the product as per the classification of the product as per the quality or the uh, size or anything so here it is as per the quality health and promotion of product so when you uh, just for a moment when you go and buy yellow label you buy a high quality product when you buy green label so that label tells you what the quality of the product health and promotion of product like for example amla hair oil has a big tagline balo mein dam life mein fun and then there is a woman who just you know opens her hair and pulls a truck imagine and the same woman is there on the uh, label of uh, avla uh, dabar avla hair oil and she's smiling like this with long uh, you know hair so i mean like we just uh, would love to buy that kind of product which gives a long heavy hair smile in a very short okay so i but i don't put avla hair oil provide information required by law cigarette smoking is injurious to health mandatory requirements statutory warning if it is not there the product cannot be sold in the market similarly your uh, milk products like uh, those uh, uh, which you have uh, lactogen right uh, on that milk product which is given to the infants ready made uh, milk powder it is given mother's milk is best for child but this is again you are providing it but that statutory warning has to be given it's mandatory according to the law so label provide all this information and according to the label people do buy the product we know it we go we just buy the product and we just turn the product we see the mrp usually we tend to do that and we read the content i do it many times if i have to buy a chocolate or a chewing gum which is bitter dark or sugar free or something like that i immediately read the content of the product who's the manufacturer that's my habit of doing that probably being a business studies teacher or otherwise also so that's what label does for us I hope you've enjoyed a product related decisions and product and, and we're going to do the next video that is going to be price and its factors till then bye bye